Welcome to my channel. I appreciate every single person that comes to my channel. Those of you who subscribe, those of you who like my videos, who comment on my videos, and who share my videos. I'm thankful for every single one of you, and I appreciate the fact that you're interested in hearing what I have to say and that you like the things that I'm doing. Tonight I want to talk about something that's very important to me, the power of prayer. We live in a terrible time when lots of bad things are happening, when children are being used and manipulated by evil people, causing them to take chemicals to change their makeup, convincing them to get surgery to change their bodies. <clears throat> convincing them that they can be a different sex than what they were born. People who are willing to put gay dancers, or what do you call them? Uh, I forget what you call them. The, the men who dance as women in front of kindergarten children. Kindergartners. We have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people pouring across our borders. Some of them are criminals. Some of them are terrorists. And our government does nothing, not only does nothing to stop it, but encourages it. We have people saying that parents don't have rights over their own children. Teachers who are teaching Marxism to our kids. There's so much bad and negative stuff going on in the world that you have to wonder what's going on. But if you're a Christian and you're steeped in the word, you know what it is. It's Satan. It's the devil attacking and trying to destroy America. Why America? Because America is the beacon of freedom for the world because America was at one time a Christian nation. Not official government Christian, but the people that founded America and the people that loved America and the people that grew America were Christians. They weren't perfect. People never are. But their hearts were in the right place. And now... God only knows what will happen to this nation. Literally, God only knows. The only thing that I can think of that you can do, unless you're a powerful person in a position of responsibility, is pray. But what do you pray for and how do you pray? These are questions that people have all the time. And are your prayers ever going to be answered? Sometimes it looks like they never will be. So what I want to do tonight is I want to look at some verses in the Bible and see what the Bible says about prayer. First, we want to look at <clears throat> the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> because this is Jesus Christ explaining to us how we should pray and what we should pray for. He says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. So what is the goal of their prayers? The goal of their prayers is to impress other people. Well, if that's your goal, stop praying because your prayers are worthless. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. That's right, they have a sense knowledge reward which has no meaning in death. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. I can think of some people I've heard pray. 
who are just like that. Every single other word in their prayer is Lord this and Lord that and Jesus this and Jesus that. And you wonder, who are they praying to? Because prayer is a conversation with your father. Would you talk to your earthly father like that? No. You would just sit down and have a frank conversation. That's what prayer is. A frank conversation with your heavenly father. He says, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. He knows what you need. Not what you think you need, but what you really need. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Now think about those words. He's saying that we should pray that God's kingdom comes. That's what we should be praying about. That his kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. In other words, take care of us like you do the lilies and the birds. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So there are some elements to this prayer. First, you praise God. Second, you thank God for what he's already given you. Third, you pray to God that he will take care of your needs, which he knows he will. And you know he will if you believe. And then you ask him to give you strength to fight against the devil. That's what Jesus is teaching us in this prayer. Now let's look, about, look and see what the Bible has to say about prayers. This is in Proverbs fifteen twenty nine. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. So if you're wicked, your prayers will fall on deaf ears. But if you're righteous, God will listen and he will hear. In Proverbs 28, 9, if anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. <laughs> Imagine your prayers being detestable. I mean, that's as bad as it could get, isn't it? But if you turn a deaf ear to God's instruction, which is the Bible, then God says your prayers are detestable. In James, it says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may <clears throat> spend what you get on your pleasures. So what he's telling you is, it isn't enough to pray. You have to pray with the right motives, with the right attitude, with the right thinking with the right believing you have to pray in a way that's godly now James 516 says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much think about each of those words the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So the effective or ineffectual, unfervent prayer of an unrighteous man would avail little, right? So the, the key to prayer is that, one, you have to be in the Word, you have to be with God, you have to be righteous in your beliefs and in your attitude and your prayer life. I lost a verse there, I don't know where it went. Uh, 1 John 5.14 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So think about this for a minute. Maybe in these, in these perilous times, in these awful times, you're praying to God to save our nation. But, he says, if we ask anything 
according to his will. So what is God's will for America? <clears throat> Do you know? And if you don't know, then when you're praying and you're praying for God to save our nation, if that isn't God's will, it's not going to happen. So you have to ask God, what is your will? And you have to listen to God's answer and pray for that. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So, if you're praying according to God's will, and you know that, you believe that in your heart, then God will answer your prayers. So when you ask yourself, why isn't God answering my prayer? Why isn't God saving our nation? The question you really need to ask is, what is God's will for our nation? And am I in that will? Am I thinking in terms of what God wants or what I want when I pray? You see, it's not enough to pray. You have to pray for what God wants, what God's will is. Here's a verse in Mark. This is Jesus talking. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So God does answer prayer. He still does. But he doesn't answer selfish prayers. He doesn't answer prayers that are motivated by fear. He doesn't answer prayers that will fulfill a request that you personally have. He answers prayers that fit with his will. So when you go to God and you're going to pray to God, the first thing you should ask him is, what is your will? Remember, Jesus said, thy will be done. That's what you should be praying for. And when you pray, don't use formulaic prayer. That's what Jesus told us we shouldn't do. We shouldn't be praying like the, the uh, Gentiles who believe that for their many words, they'll get an answer. That's not what prayer is. Prayer is a conversation with God. You just talk to him. And you don't have to do this out loud. You can do it in your head. You say, Father, I have a question for you. What is going on and what can I do to fulfill your will? What is going on in our world, God? And how can I contribute to making it better? What is your will for my life? What do you want me to do? And then you listen quietly for God's answer. And it will always come. It has always come for me. But many times, not in a way that I expected it, but in a completely different way that I didn't expect. I'll give you one example. There was a time in my life when I was unemployed, and I was, I was very anxious and troubled about it because I needed to get a job. And I, I, my mind was in complete turmoil. I didn't know what to do, and I was praying like crazy, but I wasn't getting an answer that I expected. So one day, while I was involved in a class and a bunch of people were attending the class, I went off into a quiet place and I said, God, I don't know what you want me to do, but you, you have to find a way to tell me. You've got to show me in a way that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, the answer is coming from you. So there can be no doubt in my mind what I need to do. So please, God, tell me what to do. A moment later, a man came walking into the room that I was in, and he got out a cigarette, and he said, Do you mind if I smoke? And I said, No, I don't mind. And I remained quiet in my thoughts, praying in my head. And he started talking. And at first I was kind of irritated at him because he was interrupting me. But then I started to listen to him. 
and he talked to me about how time when he was in great turmoil in his mind and how he needed to find a job and he just couldn't find it and he didn't know what to do and he went on and on and then he told me about how he got his job and everything worked out fine. And then he finished his cigarette and he said, well, I'll leave you to your thoughts and he got up and left. As soon as he left, I thought to myself, <laughs> God sent him there to say that to me. I don't know if his story was true or not, but it was certainly true for me. And it wiped out all the anxiety and all the concern and all the fear that I had. And I was very calm after that. And it wasn't very long after that before I got a job. So you see, when you're praying, you need to talk to God as if he's your friend, as if he's your father. And you can go to him and ask for help. And you can go to him and thank him for what he's done for you. And you can go to him and say, what do you need me to do for you? It doesn't have to be, oh, dear Heavenly Father up above, blah, 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 blah. It's just, God, we need to talk. I want to take a few minutes and discuss something with you. And then start talking about it. And again, it can be in your head or it can be out loud. It doesn't matter. God hears you either way. God knows your heart. He knows what's in your heart. And he knows what your needs are and what your desires are. And he will fulfill them when they're in his will. He will answer your prayers when it's inside his will. But if it's your selfish desires, if it's what you want, if it's what you think is best, then he may not answer them because it might not be his will. That's why when I pray about our nation, I pray, God, if it's your will, I, I pray that you will save our nation, that you will get rid of these scoundrels that are in office and that you will drive out the evil that's surrounding us. And that all these people who are sexualizing our children and, and destroying our borders and, and defunding the police and doing all these crazy, stupid things, tearing us apart by the races, black against white, against Hispanic, that I pray that God will find some way to take care of this problem because he's bigger than all of them and he can do whatever he wants. But I pray that it's his will that that's what happens. Prayer should be a vital, daily, moment-by-moment -moment part of your life. <clears throat> it should be something that you do out of habit, that it's automatic, that it's a part of you. It's who you are is a praying person. And when that's true, you will, like I have, get so many prayers answered. My life has been blessed beyond anything I could possibly imagine in every way possible children, my wife, my finances, my career, everything. I've been blessed beyond words because I pray constantly and I try to stay in God's will. And I'm not special. I'm not anybody unique at all. I'm just a plain old man, a flawed, failed man who was saved by Jesus Christ's death and resurrection and his ascension into heaven. And I pray that God will reach your, into your heart and show you the way that you can begin, if you haven't already, a prayerful life that brings you all the blessings that you deserve and that gets the answers to the questions that you have that are inside of God's will. And tonight I pray that you will be abundant, that you will live a long life and that you'll be healthy, that God will keep you safe, and that he'll do the same for every single person that you love. And I pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests made known to God. 
and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Vietnam era vet out.